Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're going to show you how to make a simple flip book in Flash Catalyst. So if you roll over the flip book, you click on it, and the page flips over, and there's my beautiful family. Page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5, and you close the book. So open the book again. So you actually see there's different images on each side of the page here. And click over, and my text flips over with the book. Now, uh, you need to do a few things before you actually get into this tutorial. So there's a few things you want to do. First of all, download the code from my Google Code and go through it and watch the previous video on uh, creating a double-sided image in Flash Catalyst. You really need to do that because if you don't do that you're not going to understand what I'm doing here. Now there's two key things in actually creating this particular uh, application and one is you need to create all the base code in Flash Catalyst and two you need to use the effect end and effect start to order death. And so let's take a look at Flash Catalyst. So I'm in Flash Catalyst right now, and what I've used Flash Catalyst to do is lay out my whole system so, so that all this code is written for me automatically, and I love that. And maybe I'm using Flash Catalyst a little different than what a lot of people would use it for, because what I want is I want actually to have that code written for me without doing it myself. And so what you'll see here, if you come over here to the Layers panel, you can see that I've laid everything out. There's the top cover, and here's the first image, second image, third image, fourth image, fifth image, sixth image, uh, and then the back cover. Just like I did in the double-sided image case, I'm just flipping these over and uh, changing the alphas so that one page shows and the other doesn't. So if you take a look at the transition, for example, from state two to three, you see all this rotation code. And what's happening is there's a fade in and fade out. So if I bring this to the middle, okay, what will happen is my book flips over and the page fades in and fades out. So just as I laid everything out in the double-sided image case, so lay everything out in Flash Catalyst and add some interactivity. And once you've done that, you've generated a bunch of source code. Let me show that source code to you real quick. Go to Code Design. And there's all that code generated for you automatically. And, you know, if you try to run this in Flash Catalyst, it really doesn't do very much. It's not attractive. It's kind of clunky. It doesn't work. But there's enough code here for me to go back and just recopy all this stuff. So I suppose the coding and building structure is done for me automatically in Flash Catalyst. And then what I do is I basically just go in and recode in Flash Builder by cut and pasting and putting in the right parameters. That makes it really easy. So let's go to Flash Builder. So here's Flash Builder, and here's all the final code. It's all been written. And I pretty much just cut and paste and put the right parameters in, transitioning as I flip the pages, just as you learned in the double flip uh, book. But there's two important things that I want to show here. Number one is what you want to do is order death. And if you come along here and take a look at this uh, parameter here, you see that on my different components I have a death component. And that enables me to order the death each time I flip the page. So each time I flip the page, what I'm doing is I'm ordering death. So as you go down here, each one of these is a page flip forward or flip back. Okay. And each time I flip, I use that dot death to order death. Okay, the other key point in this is that I need to know when to order the death. And so in my transitions, what I do is when I'm at midpoint. And midpoint, believe it or not, is on the fade. So if we call the double images tutorial, uh, the fade happens when the page is at 9 degrees, when it's facing you. So each time the pages are facing me at 9 degrees, I reorder their depths. And when they flip back, they're in the right position. And pretty much that's all there was to this program. It's just great. So use the code, play around with it. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to add some data to this and make it dynamic. So let's run the program one more time. There's my book. Flip, 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 flip. God bless. Now I want to say one more thing. What I've done here is with the text, I actually stuck it in here. I didn't worry about a double side on that front cover. And just real quick here, uh, how do you get the text on there, by the way? Now, if I put a double side, then I have different text on either side. But how do I get the text in there? Well, it's real simple. Let me show you that, and then we're done. What you want to do is actually navigate to the component itself. So I'm going to come to the code. I'm going to scroll down to the first component. Let's take a look at the cover component. Here's the back cover. Here's the front cover right here. So I hold my control key down, I roll over that, and I click on that. And that takes me to that cover. All I have to do is go to design mode, and then drag the text components on that I want. So if I go to Windows, Components, 
We're going to have a ton of components. Now, the neat thing about this, I can drag anything over here. I can drag a button. I can drag a checkbox. I can drag a video. And it will flip 3D as I turn the page. Isn't that so simple? So this is a million times easier than it was in paper vision. And not only that, when you flip the page, it says the text flips with it. And so there's a lot of work to do that to make components work the correct way in flipping and rotating objects. But in uh, Flash Builder, it's just so easy because that Z component is native. I just got to run it one more time. I get jazzed up when I build things that work. So let's run it one more time. And there you have it. And I really hope this is of some use to you. In the next few videos, we are going to... Um, take this and make it data driven. This was Mike Lively. Thanks for listening.